Hi, I'm Chuck, amateur call sign KK6USY. My channel is Ham Radio Adventures. You're a new ham, you don't know where to find information, and you just don't know where to turn. Well, stick with me. I'm going to give you some good information today, and I think you're going to like it. What I'm going to do is we're going to build what was built years and years ago. It's called 7DB for 7 bucks. Now, when it was built, you could probably build it for 7 bucks. And nowadays, uh, materials prices have gone up. And you can still do it. I can almost do it for free because I have lots of pieces laying around. It's basically made out of PVC and uh, aluminum rods. Uh, they used welding rods. I couldn't find any welding rods really long enough, so I'm trying to make this easy for you guys. So I've got some uh, aluminum rods that I bought from, I think, Home Depot. I've had them for a while. And I also have a bigger piece that I'm gonna use for the driven unit, and that's uh, I got that from, I think, uh, DX Engineering a long time ago, and I just happened to have the pieces laying around. So you can build this pretty cheap. You can use lots of materials. I'm going to show you different materials. You can use PVC. You can use a 2x2, two two, a 1x2. Anything, to tell you the truth, square objects are a little easier, especially if you have something like a drill press that you can drill straight holes. The straighter, the better. Round pipe is not the easiest. I'm going to show you a technique that hopefully works. We'll see. I, have, I do have a, a way of doing it on my drill press also. But I'm going to keep this down to simple tools like a, just a hand drill. What I'm going to do is go in on the computer, bring up a page that uh, shows this antenna build, and it gives all the, all the uh, specifics and specifications and everything for, it, for the build. If I have time, I'm going to show you an alternate way of making it, which is a little maybe cooler on the cool effect, if you don't mind spending just a little bit of money. And still, it's not that much, and you'll end up with extra parts, and you can build maybe a 70 centimeter. This one is for two meter, uh, but you could, it could be basically, you could probably get a uh, online calculator and do 70 centimeter also in the same way. So let's, let's go to the computer and we'll check this thing out and we'll get to the build. The build here. Now, when you come down at the bottom of this, this was uh, April of 1993. So it's been a while. And I did notice one of the, uh, it says, uh, need a two meter beam antenna, but you're short on cash. You can build this antenna for the cost of a fast food meal. And actually that's probably more accurate than the seven bucks because a fast food meal is more than that nowadays. But this is the, this is it here, the uh, picture of it. And uh, I'm, I'm gonna show you a little different way that we're gonna build this. If you look down here in the center section here, it shows a T. Now I'm going to build this as a one piece from here to here, and I'm going to show you how to still be able to use a T, but we're going to, we're going to customize a T for that. You can buy them this way, but uh, they're hard to find, but I will show you what we're going to do there and, and what that will be able to do. Then you can take all the sections off and then you can store them inside the tube because you have a cap on the front and the back to keep everything in. Okay. So basically, and I'm going to give you guys the measurements. I've already calculated. Now you'll have to measure your own, but this distance here, if you see this right here, when my cursor is, they don't tell you this distance. And that is the distance of the pipe where it goes into each, each side of the T and there's a space in between. So you have to add that yourself. It's not super critical. Um, I will give you measurements for one that I know that works. So basically your, uh, your reflector. And the reason I said that, uh, the welding rods that I found were all like 36 inches. Well, your your um, reflector needs to be 40 inches. And I didn't want to have to have you guys like water or, or weld or solder something up together to get that link. So we're gonna, I bought this stuff from uh, from Home Depot, I'm pretty sure. And um, and then if you look at the, the middle section here, they use two pieces. So that could have been okay there. And, um, but what the reason there's two pieces and the reason they can get a buy with that is that they have to be separate because basically what you're building here is a dipole. So you have a left, you have the, the two different sides of your dipole. Your coax will go into here. 
Um, and, and, and I'll show you, I just basically uh, got the end of a piece of coax and put uh, end connectors on it, okay? And then they're showing that uh, 37 to 39 inches. Now, if you do wanna make something where you can move this in and out, the tubing that I used, you can slip some tubing on the inside of it. Uh, these other pieces are, are solid core uh, aluminum, so you won't be able to do anything with those, but you don't need to. So 35 inches here, and they are showing 36 inches of, it's important if you're gonna use this as a vertical antenna for FM that you're, you don't use a metal pole in line because this is all gonna be in, in one, one parallel line here. And you don't wanna use a metal pole in that section. So they're, they're, they're saying to use at least 36 inches of, of PVC or whatever else material that's not like metal, that's not conductive, okay? And then what they did here is you move that you can move these pieces in and out right here, and that will give you your adjustment for different bands. If I if I remember right, I I can get mine to where to do anything I wanted, like 520, 146, 520, and then um, it will also do repeaters. But that that's a that's a way of getting it so you can adjust it. And all you're doing is adjusting the length of your dipole, just like you would for a regular dipole. And they're telling you how to figure things out here. And I'm, I'm going to let you guys read all that. And um, let's see, what else did I see? See, here's their, we're going to do something a little bit different here. You'll still have the T and you'll still be able to put the piece down below. But we're going to cut this top half and just basically slide it down in there. And, and it works just fine. I'm going to go outside. We're going to, I'm going to cut this. I'm going to show you how I figured out how that maybe we can drill holes in a straight line because you want these lines when you're looking at this antenna you want these things when you're looking sighting down you want it to be pretty much 90 degrees to the boom and then also straight in a line okay if you don't get it perfect i guarantee it'll still work as long as you get it pretty close okay guys so what i did is i took one of these i don't know how close i can get it so this is a, uh, a t it's for a three quarter inch and what I did is I cut the top of it off. And you guys can see that there. And what that does is ju it's, it's just enough to where it'll still clip over. It'll just clip over the top of this like this. Okay, and that'll hold it plenty good. Now you can buy those, but I've had a hard time finding them. I actually, I think I saw them at, when we had Orchard, but when it changed to Ace, they don't carry it anymore. So there we go. So I cut this already. This is my three quarter inch piece of pipe and I've cut it at 40 and one half inches. That's a half inch longer than the longest element, okay? I've got two caps and also it gives you enough room to cap the ends of it, okay? So there's our parts. Now, now I told you we had a dipole. So this is what I made here. So if you look really careful, there's a, a side here, there's a side here. In the middle, this looks like silver, but it's a piece of fiberglass uh, rod that fit in here pretty tight. It's, it's pretty tight. And uh, that separates the two pieces so they don't touch, okay? And that's what you want. You want to be two separate pieces, and then you get your measurement. I'll give you the measurement of mine. Uh, let me measure for you real quick. So what I actually did total is 34 and 5 eighths. That's what I did for my total length of my driven unit, okay? Now, this is a piece of, <laughs> I was changing the fascia board on my house and I had to rip them down. So this is the board. All you're looking for is something straight, something that doesn't conduct. Now you can do this on a piece of aluminum for the boom also, but you need to separate it needs to be, it's supposed to be separated from the boom, okay? And that's why this is a non-metal thing. Now this one I, I, I made about six inches longer, so if I want to, I can hold this as a handle. You can, you know, get round this off nice and make it, you know, put a piece of foam, like maybe the uh, foam that you put over your pipes to keep them insulated, right? So that's another way to doing it. This could also be a two by two. This is considered inch and a half, which is a two by and you could do a square one if you wanted more. This is plenty strong enough. I put it on edge like this, and being square, it's really easy to drill a square, straight 90 degree to the boom angle or a hole. 
Now I also, <laughs> I had this, this, this is an old umbrella that I just took apart and I'm like, man, this, this is really nice wood. It's like teak or something. I don't know what it is, maybe mahogany. But the same thing with this. You could use this also. It's plenty strong and it's nice and straight. You just want it to be fairly straight and you want everything to be in a line. Okay, so if you can look at the end of this pipe, I marked pretty close to the center and the center on both sides. And then what I did is I ran a line down the sides. Okay, and one down this side. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure, we'll start at zero. So say that's an, say, let's just say it's an inch in. So it'll be an inch in here and then an inch in here. Drill the two holes and then I'll drill, run a drill bit all the way through both of them. That should get you pretty straight if you're careful with your lines. Now let me show you how I did the lines. I laid, I laid this pipe on the ground, on the uh, table here. And then I took this piece of aluminum, which brought me up a little bit. I found this line here. I, I marked, like I said, I marked it there. And then I marked it on the side here, just like this. And then I took this and ran this down the side of it. I lined it up and just went right down the side like this. I did that on both sides. So I'm gonna mark this one and then I'm gonna, I'll give you the measurements for all the holes. Okay, so there you go. Pretty straight. I mean, it's not perfect, but it will, it will work. Okay, let me give you the measurements. This end is the back of the antenna. So your first measurement is from the, you put this wherever, and I, I put it a half inch in from the uh, tube, from the cap. 16 inches to that one and then 36 and a half inches to that one should get you pretty close okay so you guys can see the t works the nice part about the t you can let me straighten it up just a little bit so uh, that would be for basically for um, horizontal and then you can just take this and spin it and now you're set up for vertical. That's why I like that setup. You can do both very easily. Okay. Let me, let me do a little drilling and I'm going to show you an alternative way of doing this. Okay. If you want to do this really nice, if you look here, this, all, this is an all thread. Now, um, this is basically what I did on my Yagi, my two meter Yagi five element that I built. And I would do this, I'd find somebody with a drill press if you can, and have them drill these holes for you and do it in something square like this is way easier. So basically you just end up sticking this one on there and screw it on. Now I will say the driven unit needs to be uh, separated from side to side. So you need to use a uh, plastic or nylon threads and you can get that. I'll, I'll leave the link for you guys. And now, now look at this bad boy. Now it's not measured out exactly right, but everything's nice and straight both ways. And I left a handle at the end here, if you guys can see that. But uh, this would work just even better. And it's just like cleaner setup and they do it on the square. And it's, it's really nice. And for this one, you would actually, you'd have to put some kind of a, a bolt up system for it, for uh, a, you know, like a U-bolt system for it doesn't take my or you just hold it by hand and this is a good, great little hold it by hand one so I have this little short piece here what I did here is you guys can see this one side is the center conductor and one side is the the um, shield and it doesn't matter which side it goes to one side goes to basically here and one side goes to there and remember if you do the metal one like this you actually have to have something to break the contact between the two and that would be like a nylon all thread and that's 832 for the arrows and I'll, I'll put the arrows and everything in the in the list with the bottom in the description in the other end I just got a and then I use a barrel connector with this and I prefer the female um, but uh, this is what I had 
Well, I hope this video helps a lot of you out. Um, I know being a new ham, there's a lot of things you have you look into and you don't, don't know where to find information. It is tough. Uh, YouTube is a great place. While you're here, uh, hit that like button for me, would you, if you if you got something out of this. And if you are new here, go ahead and subscribe. Hit that all. If you don't like the channel later on, you can always unsubscribe. And people do. I, I, I get it. This is Chuck, KK6USY, for Ham Radio Adventures. Be safe, 73s, and hope to catch you on the airwaves.